This is the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, the only podcast devoted to making soul music relevant again. Let's get started with your host, Todd Woodson. Thanks for joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. My special, special, special guest today is a talented singer songwriter out of Detroit, Michigan. Her name is Laura Rain. That's Rain. How are you doing today? Hey, how are you? Great. <laughs> Thanks how for are having you? me. <laughs> doing well. Welcome to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. Thank you. I'm, I'm excited. Bring I'm Back Soul. Here. That's what it's all about. <laughs> I've, been, I've been wanting to talk to you for a while because we feature some of your music on our uh, on our website, our new music section. And oh, I, and let's see if we can get Laura on the show uh, because you have an interesting, uh, interesting background and I just love your music. But we're going to get into that uh, in just a little bit. Um, but as always, for those who aren't familiar with uh, Laura Rain, um, tell us about yourself. Well, I hail from this great city, um, Detroit, and uh, we started the band in 2012. And we've been cooking pretty well ever since then. We've released four albums. And since September, we've been releasing a single a month, which has really gotten us some nice attention from the likes of yourself and uh, some other people that are trying to spread the word about our music. So... Um, we're very excited about that. I, I think there's a lot of people that like soul music and different kind of music than what they might hear on the mainstream radio. So shows like yourself uh, really help the independent artist. Yeah, here, here. Um, I couldn't agree more. Um, now, you're from Detroit. Um, and I guess it goes without saying music is with the whole Motown and it's just a lot of uh, artists who come out of that area. Yes. Um, when did you know that you wanted to, uh, to sing or pursue a singing career? I think that it was inside of me at a, at a very young age. You know, many people ask me this question and it's almost unexplainable. I used to feel such a pull towards music. Like somebody was taking my hand and taking me to the music and, you know, my, my father did not listen to soul music. My father listened to classical music, but he had an amazing music room. So I learned to listen. You know, we had Detroit Bungalow. Everybody's got the small little bungalow row house. But one of the back rooms was his music room. And he had great big speakers, speakers we would kill for now with, you know, wood cabinets, had the, the eight track, the reel to reel, the turntable. Um, and so I think that's where I really learned to listen and absorb. And then I had all my mother's, you know, soul records and some rock and roll. And my mother and I would listen to Shaka, Shaka Khan is like my biggest influence. Patti LaBelle, um, the Clark sisters, you know, famous gospel group out of Detroit. So there's so many, there's so many, but, um, that's really where it started. I think in that music room, I, I've been asked that question a lot recently and, and definitely it's where it started. <laughs> um, so your dad didn't like soul, but your mom did. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Who, um, all right. I guess, I guess you guys play both in the house. I was going to say who, um, who style um, of music um, won over for the most part? most part was it mom's soul or was it dad's uh, rock and roll well i you know my father played classical music i'd say you know that that that's good for the brain right that's a good that's good brain food <laughs> good brain food I, you know when my dad would be away at work or whatever we'd turn up the jams and we'd listen to the gap band and do our dancing in the house and you know <laughs> that's where that's where it all started death really listening to music but whatever it was in me was pulling me to music it's, it's an unexplainable thing. 
okay. really. Did you sing in um, high school or um, the church or how did you kind of hone your, uh, your craft? You know, I, I did some singing. I, I never really was a, a part of the larger group. I, I was in the choir in high school for a couple of years. Um, I think I had been writing songs since kindergarten, you know, <laughs> but um, when I graduated high school, I um, pursued classical training because I wanted to learn how to sing properly. Um, and it took me a really long time to find that person. And I worked with him for about four years. And that training allowed me to be able to go on long tours, save my voice. Without that training, I would have blown out my voice mm. years ago. So I did sing a little bit in high school. I mean, I was always singing, but as far as participating, it was after, after that when I when I was in some, some church choirs, um, for a short time, that really was an incredible experience. And I think in Detroit, it's very easy to find music, especially, you know, um, when I was much younger, because now music venues are few and far between, but, you know, I was sneaking into clubs and singing when I was, I don't know, 16, 16. I mean, I was singing at 16, sitting in with the bands, the, the karaoke in Detroit was like a whole scene. It was a, it was a whole scene. You had to be the best singers in the city were down there. It seemed like, so you had to be on point. <laughs> so, um, the, the bars sneaking into the bars in Detroit. <laughs> okay. Um, now I should mention that, um, you know, we're speaking to you, but you're all, you're part of a group called Laura rain and the Caesars. Um, when did, uh, when did the band form? So I had, um, I come back from the Los Angeles area the second time and it was starting over again. And I met my now husband, George, back in 2012, I had, I had a, gig at a restaurant um and someone had canceled the night before and he had been sending me a message saying that i i want to see you sing i'm i'm coming to your show tomorrow i said great because i need a guitar player <laughs> i don't have anybody to play this gig with me so we met and a week later you know he wrote me a letter saying that he wanted to dedicate himself to my voice and this project. And, you know, then it turned into marriage and a three and a half year old and touring and all, and all this stuff. So um, he really was the first person I think that believed in me so much to say that to me. And it was our first album in 2013, our second album, 2014, then 2015, then our fourth album, when our, our son was born in 2017, and then now the singles a series in 2020. Okay. So that's pretty much how it formed. We, you know, we, we got the band together, um, had a regular spot at, at a club downtown, and that's how we built the band, and it, and it went from there. And then we didn't start touring until... October of 2015, 2014. And then the band changes because the people that are in your band in Detroit aren't necessarily the ones that go on the road because the road is a whole different animal. So, yeah. Okay. Now, let me let me back up a little bit. Now, you said you were in California. Were you pursuing music in California as well? Yes and no. Yes, um, I was. Um I was doing some gigs and I, I was, it, it's amazing how, when you go outside of your area, California, they don't have Detroit music. So we were really, I wouldn't say we, but I was doing covers at the time. I wasn't even doing my own music, but the demand for what I was doing out there was, was, was good. If I, if I would have stayed out there and pursued uh, what I was doing, you know, um, who knows what would have happened, but 
it was good. So um, I was doing it, but not original music. Okay. Okay. Um, I understand. So 2020 has been kind of a weird year for everybody, but you guys seem to just keep on rolling. Um, you guys had, I think, four releases this year or well, 2020? Five. 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 So the pandemic, the pandemic, the pa- the pandemic um, didn't doesn't seem like it slowed you guys down at all. You know, the road has slowed us down from writing. So, and then having such a young child, what we we knew when this, you know, you you take things in stride. We are musicians. We're used to being devastated financially and working and then no work and all this success and then no success. So we're used to all this stuff. So when the pandemic came, it was an awakening to, okay, now is the time God is sitting me down and saying, you have to do this. And I actually resisted for a long time because it's, it's so much work to start the writing process. And when you're touring and um, raising a a child, all these things seem to get in the way before your creative process, which is why it's much, much easier for someone that's 20 with no, no family to raise, to, to put out lots of music and get on the road. And when you have all these obligations and trying to survive um, your creative process really can be hindered, but we've had so many interesting things happen this year. I felt like, well, this is our chance and we're going to make it. I did have some goals that I I didn't meet for 2020. I'm hoping to meet those in 2021. But as far as our singles campaign, um, it has been incredibly successful because what we were doing is when we were out on the road, you know, I, I, I run my show old school. I mean, I sell my CDs off the stage. I'm, I'm, dancing. I, I say hello to everyone, give everybody a hug because I want them to feel special because they mean so much to me because they got off the couch, they got dressed, they came to the show, they spent their money, they sat there, they watched us, they, maybe they bought a CD or a t-shirt or whatever, but I don't think people realize how special that is. And so I, I do try to make a connection with every single person. So when the pandemic hit, I'm like, okay, well now what do we do? We had to boost up everybody now is so concerned with social media and you have to be because now everybody's at home. So it's the way that we're all communicating. Right. So we started doing the streaming. We started mm-hmm. releasing the singles. Um, and that really started to pull in our, our retain the fan base that we have. I mean, we heard from people that we hadn't seen, you know, in, in a couple years or more that were watching us online because we didn't play in their town or they didn't get to the club last time we were in their neighborhood. Now we're, we're getting fans from Italy, from Spain, from, from France. And it's, it's incredible how that is building our, our wealth as a band and, and our worth, I guess, um, to have that, online retention and then we do get to and then we hope to connect with more business people and and do bookings this way as well so that was a a huge thing that was on our list to do because we saw what was going on we saw what the bands were doing that were really smart and seemed to have it all together and here we are old school getting in the van and burning the gas and wearing ourselves out instead of trying to reach out to a thousand people from our living room instead of you know a hundred people or 50 people at one club at a time So that was an eye opener, writing the songs and really going in a direction that um, has, is suiting us. I, I, I write how I feel. I don't try to write because I'm a blues singer or I'm a soul singer, but I am a soul singer because I sing from my guts and I sing with all that has happened to me in, in my life, you know, that's what I characterize as a soul singer. My, my soul I'm, I'm giving to you when I'm singing. Um, 
so it really allowed us to express ourselves freely and, and we're still working on that and we're about to do some more different things. But that whole single series really helped boost us up um, on social media and we're still on Facebook. We're still working on other platforms. It's, it's endless. It's absolutely, as you know, cause you, you have to advertise your show and all this, it's, it's the same thing. So that has been really good. I have been more financially devastated, you know, in between tours than I was during this pandemic, because for the first time musicians, you know, can get some help. Whereas never before, um, was that available? So we've been extremely smart about that and very fortunate, um, that, um, you know, a lot worse things could not have happened. We have been in worse situation than this and our family is safe and that's all we care about. And we will get through this, um, as we hope everyone else does. Um, but at this time, I just feel like God is forcing us to be in this situation so we can create. And I do feel like we are moving through some, some areas and we are moving forward. Despite all the horrible things that have happened in this world, in our government, the, the, the whatever people are crawling out from under a rock um, that want to uh, espouse their hatred for other people. That's just such a small amount of people. I really feel like there's good people everywhere and we're going to prevail. And I feel like God is moving us. And, and I think more of us feel like that than not. If I can, I can't speak for anybody else, but I, I definitely feel like it's a time for spiritual, spiritual reflection and we're moving forward. So <laughs> that was a long answer. <laughs> this is yeah, this is probably a bump in the road and um, you know, hopefully people will get back to normal, maybe get back to their senses a little bit. I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, let's just try to stay positive. And, um, you know, like I said, we'll, like you said, we'll get through this. We'll continue our episode after this message. Are you looking for a reliable way to transfer money to family and friends? Check out the Cash App. It's safe, easy, and convenient. Just download the app from the Apple or Google Play Store and start receiving and sending money in a few minutes. Sign up today and receive $5. And don't forget to use our referral code, VGRCWQX. Swag at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com. Now, back to our conversation. Um, now, let's talk about some of your music. Um, I just had a chance to listen to four or five different tracks. And um, I, I got to say, when I first heard... Um, some of your music, you you sound to me a lot like Tina Marie. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard that before, but you guys have the same sort of flow and the spirit. And I can say, oh, wow, that sounds just like Tina Marie to me. Who else did you listen to? Or did you try to pattern your, uh, maybe not mimic, or were you influenced by certain certain artists? I love Tina Marie and I've been getting that a lot lately. And I think I have been um, thinking about her with some of this more recent music, though she never really was one of my super idols. I think I love her a lot more now because I never realized how amazing she was until more, more recent it, she wasn't one of the first influences in my, in my career. So, I mean, I love me some Tina. So if somebody says, and you know, I take that as a high compliment. So that's, that's amazing. Cause she's amazing. Um, no, my, my influences were Donna summer that she works hard for the money. I still have that record album. That was my mother's. It was like, that's one of my most favorite record covers of all time for me. I used to just stare at it. Um, Shaka Khan, you know, Patti LaBelle was a huge one. And then Aretha Franklin came later, you know, Al Green. Um, I'm, there, there are so many, you know, we, we go through our phases where we absorb artists and listen to all their music and then we move on to the next sect and right, right. keep going. So there, there are so many, but those, those are probably the biggest ones that 
still influence me today. And, and I need to listen to way more artists, more current artists, but I'm just kind of stuck. I'm stuck where I am. I, <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. You're doing a, a great job. You and the, and the Caesars. Um, let me ask you a quick question though. Um, you're, you're part of a band and you don't see many bands anymore. Do you think bands will ever um, come back like they did back in, you know, the seventies, eighties? Well, you know, this is a very hard question because it is, it is extremely hard to pay a band on the road. So if the clubs are not coughing up the money to have the band, this um, is why you see a singer and a DJ or a singer, a drummer and a DJ, this kind of thing. And they do shows like this all over the world because they only want to bring over in Europe one or two people. It's, it, it's harder and harder. So we have to see what's going to happen when things get back to normal. If they're ever what kind of new normal we will be living because it will be a new normal. What are they going to do? Um, is the price going to be lower for the band? Or are they going to pay us more? Um, or are they going to pay us the same? Uh, it, it's really hard. And in a touring band on the road without a label and no management, surviving and, and actually coming home in the black with a, with a handfuls of money is, is extremely rare. Um, the amount of skills I possess to make money on the road, I thank God for all of my previous life experiences because it is not easy. Uh, it is not easy. So I, I'm not sure. There's not too many of us that do what we do. I think that the larger talent groups, uh, you know, need, need to uh, embrace more of the indie artists. I, I'm not really sure what's going to happen. Okay, so it's a just just a just a a mere for, mere point of just economics. It sounds like uh, I think so. Okay, and so that's what happened to bands. Just the, the economics got in the way. It sounds like what you're saying. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, we can. We'll only, see. You know. Uh, we can only hope. <laughs> Let's talk about some of your music in uh, 2020. Uh, I know you said five releases in 2020. Yes. Um, that seems like a lot. I mean, some people just do maybe one or two, but you guys did five. Um, and how is the, how's the, um, how have they been received by your fans and the public? So I think when we first started, we, we did get quite a big response, but it was mostly from the fans that we already had. And then as we started gaining steam, we started finding more DJs. Um, I actually didn't have, I didn't know who to send this music to um, because as a touring band, we were kind of left of center playing on this circuit of blues clubs, which We've played at Buddy Guys a bunch of times in Chicago. Um, they like us, but we don't really fit in with the other bands. So now we have this new new batch of songs, which are really different, more different from our, our last albums. Who Who is going to play this music? So by the third and fourth song, for our fourth single, we got a review in Soul Tracks. Mm we got a feature that really opened up a lot of doors for us. And then we found really the whole soul music crowd I've been trying to find for a long time. And we you know you guys don't advertise, you know, you're let me in, let me out. So <laughs> they said, we like it. We'll let you in. So that's pretty much how I felt. Now, the golden gates of soul opened up and they let me in. <laughs> so I found all these people that are um, accepting and sharing our music. It's, it's quite profound. I feel like <laughs> this is like a whole nother turn in our, in our career. It's great. 
So we're still we're still learning and, and our, we were gaining our DJs and fans throughout this process uh, one by one. So actually the DJs aren't even caught up with, I think, the, the first song and the third song and barely the fourth song because the fifth song, Closer to the Wind, which we, we released on December 31st, New Year's Eve, got so much attention we weren't even expecting it. Mm. So it was like crazy. The song we thought wasn't any good. And my husband didn't want to release it. I redid the vocal a week before, uh, right before it got mastered. I said, no, I don't like it. I'm going to redo this. And then we remixed it and we released it. We did the video two days before we released it downtown Detroit. I don't know what it is about that song, but that song opened up a whole nother set of gates for us. <laughs> Strange. Wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it just goes to show you that, um, that um, sometimes you, sometimes you don't know. Sometimes the public will tell you um, how good a song is. And it sounds like the public spoke. So uh, congratulations on that. Um, 2021 is here, um, obviously. Now, you said you had some some goals in 2020 that you didn't reach that you hope to reach in 2021. Uh, what are those? What are some of those goals? So I don't like to say I'm superstitious. So I'll go I'll go around the fact. But what we really do need, um, we're I think we're going to hold off on putting out more singles because with the past two songs that we put out, we reached so many new people uh, all over the world. I think we're going to hold off and we're going to write an entire album mm. and we're going to see what happens. Cause we have more, we actually have more songs to release, but you know, nothing goes as planned. It, it went way, it, it exceeded my expectations tremendously in certain aspects. And then, of course, certain things you're like, mm, that didn't work out too well. Why not? Um, what can we do better? So we're going to put a halt on the single series right now. And we are going to get back to the live streaming more frequently. Because releasing one song a month is an incredible amount of work because I'm contacting press, I'm contacting DJs, uh, you know, there's ads, there's this, it takes up all your time, just like you're doing an album, but you're releasing an album every month because it's the same people that you're hitting. So, right. but it, it did its job. We, we, uh, we were welcomed in and, and we're in, I feel like we're in. So now we really have to, uh, you know, do another 180 <laughs> when they hear this music they're going to be like oh my god so that's that's what we're working on just we're being going to be better than we thought we could be push ourselves and challenge ourselves we are trying to work with some different people this time around we really don't want to be floating around here we, we would like um more of a presence with with some business um with our music to help direct us where we're working on some sync stuff. Um, all of these things need to be a part of what we do because as far as the live performances, I'm not sure if all of our local work is going to be maintained or it will just be touring work. So there's many pieces of the pie that need to come together, but uh, we are hoping to meet some people that will help us further with our career and we hope to get our music out to more people it would be nice uh you know for a, a label in the states to pick us up it would be nice for a small indie label so we have to work on that and and get some bit more business going okay now you said in the states are you signed to a label overseas not yet, but we have some upcoming news. Okay. So I won't put leave that cat out of the bag yet, <laughs> but <laughs> we've got some good things coming. <laughs> All, right. All right. That's called a tease, everybody. Um, yeah. So 
Well, congratulations. I mean, I, 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 maybe doors are starting to open up for you. Um, I know I love your music. It just reminds me of the fun music that we used to listen to back in the day. Um, so I think it's I think it's awesome. I hope people get a chance to uh, go check it out. Um, and in fact, we got you featured on our new music section on our website as well for January and February. So um, if you want to check out Laura, uh, we have one song, but that will lead to all our other stuff. I think we have a Spotify link on our website. So um, yeah, so um, well, that's great. Um, anything else you want to share, uh, Miss Laura? Oh, well, I want to say that Yes, the music, this new music was created with that happy place from back in the day, because I think being in this whole situation this year, I had to think about what really made me feel good. And Soul Creature and The Deal took me back to that place where I was in the kitchen dancing with my mom, listening to those records and having fun, having that fun feeling. And, and so that's so you get that. So that's what that was all about. Um more music coming. We have to keep independent music alive. And what you're doing is super. I, you know, you say you're going to bring back soul music. <laughs> One man on a mission to bring back soul music. So I love it. All right. It's amazing what one one person can do. One person can do so much. So um, we definitely support you and your efforts to uh, spotlight independent soul artists. So thank you for having me. No problem. We were talking before we started recording. You were saying something. It takes it takes a village. So, you know, we all kind of pull together. We can we can make this thing happen. Um, I really love that song, "The Deal." Um, that to me, that has, I don't know, fun disco clubbing written all over it. And um, so that's probably my favorite track that you guys have done. Um, awesome. Yeah. So, Miss Rain, tell people where they can reach out to you on social media. So, if you want to hear all of our music, I would suggest that you go to our website, laurarain.net. You can listen to all of our four albums plus uh, all of our new singles for free. And uh, I suggest you support local and independent artists. So, if you like what you hear, it's 99 cents a track. Buy a track. Um, we also have our merch on our website, too. So if you want a physical CD, we have some of our um, back catalog on there. And then we are on Facebook. We're on Instagram. I'm easy to find. So Laura Rain and the Caesars, Laura Ra Ms. Laura Rain on Instagram. I I'm, I'm easy to find. We have a YouTube channel as well. So, Okay. Well, Miss Laura Rain, I appreciate you taking the time today. Finally, I'm glad Thank we finally you. got you uh, on the show. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. It was a blast. <laughs> no problem. Uh, keep doing good music and keep us posted on what's going on with Laura Rain and the Caesars. Thank you. All Thanks right. so much. No problem. And that's Laura Rain, and we'll be right back. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guest, Miss Laura Rain. You can find out more about Laura on her website at laurarain.net. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and Pandora. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bring Back Soul Music TV. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Don't forget to check out all our merch at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com. We call that the Soul Shop. I'm Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining us. See you next week.